it's been a while since the last video update. Um, life's just been a little bit busy, but I figured we didn't really finish off this build series. Um, I know there's, you know, I've had on Instagram just a few questions about like what all it took to build this car, and I want to talk about that a little bit. So we've gotten a few new parts. Um, just haven't had a chance to install them yet, but. I want to go over those with you guys today so that way you know we can see there's still stuff going on with the Honda it's not quite done yet so we're just gonna pull it out a little bit get it ready to uh, get washed because it is dirty it's been raining a lot these last few days so yeah one of the new things we got is actually this new steering wheel um the last one that was on there I wasn't a big fan of it was one of those DMV steering wheels that were just super concave and I, I didn't really like those. Um, so found somebody on Facebook that wanted to trade and well, this is the one we got. It's a uh, Superior Motorsports. I've never heard of this brand, but one of the reasons I didn't like the other one is, well, whenever you go to use your blinker on the ones that are super concave, you have to take your hand off the steering wheel to use your blinker. But this one, my fingers aren't quite long enough, but it's I can reach it without taking my hand off the steering wheel. That's one thing I like a lot about it. Another thing we got was a new set of wheels. Um, somebody actually offered to trade me these work emotions for the Anovia wheels I had on before. So I figured, you know, you can't really pass a deal like that up. And honestly, I think the color combination works really well. The purple with the bronze. But yeah, some of the new things we got, we got the uh, GT3 fender vents, the ones that will, they look like the GT3 RS. Uh, fender vents, so we're gonna get those put on. Um, I'm gonna find a better solution for this gap here. It is just way too aggressive. Um, we have Jay's Racing style side shirts coming in probably in the next few days, and then I have the Jay's Racing rear diffuser I gotta put on. Once all that's on, I ordered the window seal for the rear windshield. I'm just gonna have one made, but I needed that window seal and you have to order them from straight from Forbidden. So once that comes in, we'll get the rear windshield put in and the, the car's coming along. It's still, you know, we're still waiting on the title and that's kind of what we're gonna go over today. Kind of the reason why I was able to get it for what I did, but let's go ahead and wash the car first. That way it's uh, nice and clean. All right, now that we got it all nice and clean, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Um, don't worry, I'll, I don't really care to dry it all off yet. I still need to uh, wet sand the entire car and polish it out. Um, it's got a lot of imperfections on it that I'm not super stoked about. But let's talk a little bit about the S2000. So for those of you that have been following me and, well, know the story behind it all, um, you guys know I have the Evo, I have the STI, both wide body, both on bags, both done to the nines. Um, STI is on three piece wheels, uh, molded wide body kit, painted. Uh, Evo is on SSRs, um, wrapped, I guess. So it's not gonna be wrapped for long. But yeah, uh, if you've been following me, you know I've had both those cars for a while now. About a year ago, I decided I want to get into more motorsports. I want to actually drive my car and actually enjoy driving it and have fun with it, beat it up a little bit. But both of these cars are too nice. You can see the STI is just right there. And well, the Evo is covered in dirt and dust in the garage, but I just, the anxiety to that would ruin one of those cars was just too much, especially with how much work and effort I've put into both of them. So I didn't want to do it with those cars. So I wanted to get something that I could beat up and not feel bad about. And that's what I found on Facebook Marketplace. There's a 350Z for 700 bucks and it ran and drove. And I went and checked it out and I bought it. Here's the story of the 350Z though. It was missing every exterior body panel except the doors. No bumpers, no fenders, no hood, no rear hatch, no rear bumper, no side skirts, basically, as close to a shell as you can get with still the motor in it. Um, and on top of that, it had what was called a non-rebuildable title or like a destruction only title. So basically the car is only good for parts. 
And I mean, the motor and the transmission is good, but my only options really were to <laughs> pull the motor, pull the trans, put them into another 350Z that I could get a title to, so I could register it, or just trailer that car to the track every single time I wanted to use it. And I live in a cul-de-sac and I know I need to get a, a car trailer, but I, I don't have space for one. Sorry about that, my mic started having issues. But yeah, so I don't have the space for a car trailer. So I decided, well, let's go ahead and sell it. And uh, I still wanted something. And that's when I found the Lexus IS300 for sale for 1100 bucks. And the car was mechanically sound. Like it had 225,000 miles on it, but you wouldn't be able to tell because it drove so good. Um, but it had, it was dented up, dinged up on every side. It used to be somebody's uh, drift car. Um, and they just used it for seat time. Nobody really cared about it. There was writing on the quarter panels. Both rear quarter panels had giant holes missing out of it. One of it looked like it got punched by the Incredible Hulk and it was just super dented in. But I figured, hey, this will be a great car just to go mess around with um, and have a great daily at the, at the same time. And it, and it was that. Um, at the time though, I wanted to get into building a car more than just slapping panels on and, and calling it a day though. So I was looking into, you know, motor builds, um, you know, body kits and all this to make it look presentable. And um, I en ended up doing a wide body kit. It was an Escura Garage wide body kit. Car looked insane. I actually really loved that car. Yeah, wanted me to fail. Thinking that it happened over committed. Wanna but I loved that car and I, painted it myself it was my first ever paint job and it came out terrible i'm not gonna lie um and eventually i finally got done with that project and i wanted something that was a little bit more enjoyable so i started searching through facebook marketplace and i found an s2000 uh for sale before we get into it though let me tell you how much i spent on my s300 in order for this to make sense if you remember the first video of this build series i talked a little bit about how much i'm into this car so let's go over a little bit of the update. So the IS300 I bought for $1,100 and I put about approximately another $2,000 in parts. Um, everything I sourced from Facebook Marketplace, um, I got a deal on the wheels. I found a sale on Fitment Industries for the Anovia, um, can't remember what model, but they had some Anovia wheels on there that they were selling, I think it was close to Black Friday, um, or there was some sort of sale going on. And anyway, I got those wheels for like $460 for all four brand new and they, they worked. So I was about $2,000 into parts, $1,000 into the car. And that includes, you know, painting it, body kit, wheels, everything. It was already on some eBay coilovers, so I didn't have to buy those, which was nice. So anyway, I was into this car, $3,000, right? So that's when I got on Facebook and was looking for another project because I wanted to some, I wanted to try again, but actually go further than I did that first time and actually, you know, from everything that I learned, you know, do better this time. Um, and I found this S2000. It was not pretty. Um, the car was dented. It ran terribly. Um, it was just a, a basket case. And finally, you know, uh, we got to agree he wanted to trade straight across and ultimately the Lexus was perfect and the kid was needing something to get to and from school with that was reliable that he didn't have to worry about breaking down that he didn't have to worry about anything on and that's exactly what the Lexus was the air conditioning worked heated seats the sunroof worked everything in it worked and you know it was, it was a great great car um, everything that had been parted out I put back on it so that way it was ready to go for him and ultimately it worked for his situation better right i have multiple cars if i need to drive something else because one car is down it's not a big deal uh but for somebody else i can see how that could be a big deal not having reliable transportation so that's why he said yes i feel like um and then we drove down to vegas because that's where he was at and that's where we traded and the Lexus drove perfectly. AC on the whole way, was super super comfortable. It was a fun ride there. Um, we get there, this doesn't look rougher in person than in pictures. And I was like, oh man, what I get myself into. But 
I didn't want to back out. I just, you know, got done driving to Vegas and well, I just figured let's just, let's see how, let's see where this goes, right? So I said, yes. Um, on the way to the gas station, put gas in the S2000, um, it died on me. And yeah, so already not to a good start. I couldn't figure out what it was. It turned right back on. So we just kind of kept going. The car ran super rough. It would try and stutter and die idle um, at speed. It would stutter on me. Um, but yeah, so we just hit the road and we're like, let's see how far we can get. We got to about St. George and then the back bumper fell off, was dragging on the ground. So we zip tied it. Um, the passenger window wouldn't go down. It still doesn't go down. I still need to fix it. So it was hot. It was like in the mid eighties. So I just unbolted the window and took it out. Cause you know, my fiance was with me in the car and I didn't want her to get heat stroke. So put the wind, the passenger window in the back, in the trunk. And then when it started getting colder, we just bolted it right back up. Um, we got to about 125, 140 miles away from home. And keep in mind at this point, I've had to stop multiple times to fill up the tires with air. I actually had to stop and replace two tires with new tires because the alignment was so bad that these tires that were roughly about 30% life just got eaten up right away. Um, yeah, at this point, we're about 130, 140 miles away from home. And I noticed when I first got the car, I saw a little bit of smoke coming from it, but I couldn't smell coolant, I couldn't smell anything. I was just like, maybe something spilled, not a big deal. Turns out that the uh, idler pulley for the serpentine bolt was seized. So it was just burning the serpentine belts up this whole time. And about 130 miles away from home, I saw the battery light turn on, um, the check engine light, like a bunch of lights just came on and I panicked. So we pulled over, found the serpentine belt had snapped. Uh, so I had no water pump, no battery, uh, well, no alternator and yeah, no accessories essentially. So we pulled off on the side of highway. We called my, uh, my father-in-law and, and he's like, Oh, I'll come down and pick you guys up. He was loading up this trailer and everything. Not a big deal. Uh, I'd realized where I had pulled off to wasn't an exit. It was where you get off to get onto another freeway and it would, would have derailed him like an additional 30 minutes just to get to that point. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to turn around, go back on the highway, make it to the next exit. Cause it wasn't that far away. That way there would be a safe meeting spot for us. Um, it was in the middle of the night while I was doing that, the car fell off of an embankment and got stuck. That got high centered. Uh, so the car got high centered. People were calling the police cause it was like the front bumper was still on the road. So it was, it was a safety hazard. Um, the cops came, they got a good laugh about it. And then, um, we were able to get a tow truck to come out and pull us out. And we asked the tow truck how much it would cost to tow since the next city. And he's like, regardless, you're going to get charged $700 just to either get you out or bring you back to the next city because that's where I'm going anyway. So we figured, well, if we're gonna have to pay. Let's might as well get a head start to this. So $3,000 for the Lexus. That's what I'm into it. Trade it straight across. Now I'm an additional 700 bucks just to get home. And um, then we got picked up and it was smooth riding from there, ready to go. Got back to Salt Lake. First thing I did is went and picked up a new idler pulley from O'Reilly's and a new serpentine belt. All in, I think that was like $80. So not a big deal. So now I'm almost to four grand. But now I'm excited. I have the car. So get the car back to the house. First thing I did was tear everything apart. It had a big wing on it. It had some BBS replica wheels. It had a Cusco roll cage. It had a bunch of nice little aftermarket goodies. It came with some extra set of brake pads and rotors. Um, so first thing I did is I stripped the car apart and sold everything. I sold the roll cage for 500. So we were at what, $4,800. Now we subtract 500 from selling the roll cage. So that puts us at $4,300. Sold the brake pads and rotors for 300 bucks. Now we're back to four grand. Uh, sorry, three grand. My math is not mathing right now. So now we're back to three grand, right? We're back to our starting point. Um, what else did I sell? I sold the wheels for 600. So now we're at $2,400, right? So at this point, I'm into this car at $2,400 and we're gonna get to the funner part here soon before we get into the modifications. Um, this is where it got difficult 
the only reason I said yes to this car is because of the paperwork I got with it. The car has no title right now. The story behind that I came to find out later on was that the previous owner from the guy that I got it from, he was getting a divorce from his wife. She got mad, took a hammer to the entire car, broke the headlights, dented every single panel, and she burned the physical title. It got sold, COVID happened, that person wasn't able to get a title because of the DMV's uh, restrictions and delays and things like that. He ended up just selling the car because he didn't want to deal with the, with the frustration of it. Then it got sold to the guy I got it from. And in Nevada, if you don't have a physical title, the only other process you can do is a bonded title, to my knowledge. I'm sure there's probably other things you can do. But yeah, so he got a bonded title. And I called the Nevada DMV to ask about it. And they said, you need to have a bonded title for two years before you get a physical title. And again, the car ran like crap and it was looking rough. And I think the guy just wanted to have a, something reliable and easy. So he just got rid of the car before the two years hit. So here comes me transferring the car back to Utah and I have no title. So, but I have every bill of sale from every ownership transfer. I have ownership transfer documents. I have the proof of the bonded title. I have the proof that the bonded title was um, closed when he sold it to me. I have photocopies of the original title. I have a statement documents stating everything that happened and why the original title got destroyed, signed by the original owner that had that happen to him. So I have probably like 17 documents stating like this car is good to go. It was just a situation that happened in the past, etc. Um, so what I had to do from here is I turned all that into the DMV. Then they gave me a phone number to um, an officer that would come out and inspect the VIN, make sure it's not stolen, make sure it's, you know, whatever. So I had that done and then uh, turned it on to the DMV. I had to write out a whole statement. I had to send pictures of what the car looked like. It was a it was a whole ordeal. And then they had to check the VIN to make sure there's no loans or liens against the, the VIN numbers of the car. And we're all good there. But now I got sent over to some office in Salt Lake where it's been sitting for the last month and a half. And every time I call, they say, oh, they haven't gotten to it yet. So we're still waiting on the title. That's why we haven't driven the car, we haven't registered the car, and well, it's kind of why it's sitting here, because I can't drive it. Anyway, back to how much does this cost me, right? I just, I felt like I needed to add that in there because it adds to the whole story of the S2000. Anyway, back to where we were. I'm at this point, right, back down to roughly around like 2,000, 2,300 bucks into this car. First thing I did was bought some Jace Racing style front fender, so that was 350 bucks. Um, went ahead and bought AP2 headlights. That was 200 bucks. So I'm 550 bucks in parts so far. Uh, bought the wheels and I got those on a deal with Fitment Industries as well. I paid, I think it was like 400 or $500 for them, right? So we're a thousand dollars now. Um, bought the paint. All of that was roughly about $500. So 1500 bucks. Uh, bought the Voltex front bumper. That was $500. So I'm two grand now. Um, bought the rear flares, that was $60, so not a big deal there. Um, bought the stereo system, which was $80 for the head unit, and then I think like $35 for the two speakers. So again, not anything super big there. Um, what else? That's, that's kind of really about it as far as I know. I mean, I might be, I'm probably forgetting some stuff because, yeah, no, that's really about it. Um, about the side skirts that's still not in yet they just got shipped that was 380 dollars um bought the gt3 race um from fender vents that was 100 bucks nothing big and i got the rear diffuser for free so i didn't pay anything for that so yeah all in i would probably say i still need to add everything up but i'm probably close to around like 4500 dollars all in into this building including getting the car the headaches the ordeal everything that's happened so essentially forty five hundred dollars is what's cost me to get this s2000 and build it to where it's at now keep in mind it's not like you can just get on facebook and find a running and driving s2000 for forty five hundred dollars that's not going to happen and if it does then buy it don't even think about it just buy it um it took me a year 
a year's time of I bought a 350Z, sold it, bought a Lexus, built it, sold it, or traded it, and then I got into what I got into. And I, I, I say this because I feel like it gives the wrong impression when you see the cool cars and you see, you know, all this and that, but it, you don't have to have money. Like, yeah, $4,500 is a lot, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to have money. If you can start with just a regular cheapo car, make it look nice, throw it up for sale, make a few hundred bucks, maybe a thousand bucks, whatever, right? Just make a little bit of money, then go into the next one, then go into the next one, you know? And then just work your way up. And then you don't have to go get a loan. You don't have to go and, you know, take money that you don't need to loan out on to go buy this vehicle when you just have to have a little bit of patience. Put that work in, build this car, learn. I didn't know how to paint cars before the Lexus. I tried rattle canning that car at first and it came out terrible. And that's when I decided I'm gonna learn how to paint. And it was not a good job. But now I was able to paint this car. And honestly, I'm not gonna say that this was a good paint job either. If any professional painters look at this, they would laugh and say it looks terrible. But I think it looks great. Especially compared to the paint job I did on the Lexus, I think this came out phenomenal. Now the bodywork, not very good. I could have done much better on the bodywork. So that's the story of the S2000. Um, kind of how we got to it, you know, all the stuff that we've done to it. And well, yeah, it's honestly a very cheap build, I guess you can say. And just doing it all yourself is really what made it as affordable as it was. So, you know, don't, don't think that this car costs thousands and thousands and thousands to build. It's honestly a very budget build style um, you know, project. And I don't care if it's not perfect, right? Like the STI, that car is perfect, right? Body gaps look amazing. They're perfect. The paint came out perfect. You know, I need to repolish the wheels, but those are perfect, right? That car came out amazing. The Evo came out great too. I wouldn't say it's perfect because again, that one I, you know, also kind of did a little bit more on the budget style. But yeah, that's the S2000. If you guys have any questions, message me on Instagram, comment on the, you know, in the comments or just let me know what you guys think. All right, that's enough about the S2000. Now that we kind of got that project on the back burner, um, I'm just waiting for parts to come in at this point. Um, I'm gonna get that rear diffuser installed probably this weekend. Uh, I'll film a video about that just because it's gonna be a, a total custom install. I don't have the brackets, I have to make my own brackets. So we're gonna make a video about how to make your own brackets. Um, how to mount that and how to make it sturdy. So now you guys know the story of the S1000. Um, let me know, did it get ripped off? Do you guys think that this was a bad trade, a bad deal? Would you put up with the inconveniences with having to deal with the DMV? Um, or do you think I came out ahead on this one? I personally think I came out ahead because you know now that all the work's done, I have a great looking car, but I also understand most people just they want to get in their car and they want to drive it. And unfortunately I'm not able to. So I want to actually talk a little bit about what is to come on the channel, right? I feel like I don't, I don't want to do just a bunch of videos of body work. Um, I feel like it's boring, but I am still going to be, you know, doing a few things here. So I actually have two projects in front of me that I want to talk about. First is first is the Evo. Um, I just rinsed it off. It's been covered in a layer of dust and it's been, you know, basically abandoned. The wrap is failing. Um, I'm kind of over the stretched tire look and I think I'm gonna go back to a big wing. So here's what, what I'm, I have planned for it. Um, I have a gallon of this black cherry pearl that looks amazing that I'm gonna be painting this car in. I'm actually gonna be taking the tires off of the S2000 because there are two 6535s. And to be honest, they're a little bit too aggressive to the point where I have to raise the car substantially just to be able to drive it because it rubs too much. The tires on the Evo are 245 40s. They're Dunlops, they're great sticky tire. And I'm gonna put those on the S2000 so that way I can lower the S2000 a little bit more and not have to worry about, you know, rubbing. Um, the Evo is on a spacer, a 25 mil spacer. So I'm actually gonna lower that down to about a 20 mil or maybe a 15 mil, just so I can still get those wheels to tuck in when I air out, but it's gonna have a, a properly fitted tire. They're 18 by 10 and a half inch wheels. So a 265, 35 is gonna fit great on it. 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a Boltec style wing on it and paint the entire car. I'm gonna redo all the carbon fiber because my the carbon on this car has honestly seen better days. It's just rotted away in the sun. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna redo all the carbon on it. And yeah, that's gonna be the next build process on this channel. We're gonna finish up with the S2000 here and there. The're, the videos aren't gonna be as consistent about the S2000. So if you're in for S2000 content, um, I'm sorry, it's not gonna be as often just because I do have to get this car ready for this show season. So probably in the next couple weeks, I'm actually going out of town, not this weekend, but the one after. But after that, I'll go ahead and get started on this one. We'll do a whole video of cleaning the car, uh, pulling the wrap off and prepping, getting it ready for paint. This one shouldn't take that long because it doesn't need that much body work. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be the next project. And I kind of got something else kind of like a side project. I don't know how much you guys are gonna care about this. So I don't know that I'm gonna even post any videos of it. Um, I have a cafe racer. This is a 1980 Yamaha XS 1100. It's 1100 cc's. This thing's gonna be a riot when I have it done. Um, I bought it for 400 bucks and I just, I guess I got bored and I wanted a new project. It doesn't run right now. Uh, we were putting everything back together. We put a little bit of fuel in the tank. So the story is from the guy I got it from, he took the tank off and couldn't figure out how to put it back on. And when he went to put it back on, it wouldn't start. So I figured I can figure it out. So we put it all back on, hooked it all up. You can see I still have a little fuel in the filter and it started leaking fuel from the bottom of the carburetor right there. So I ordered a new uh, rebuild kit for the carb. I ordered new intake boots because they're cracked. Um, I think it's either this one or the one on the other side. I don't know, it's this one right there. This one has a crack in it. I have to go through and figure out all the vacuum lines. I'm gonna rewire the whole thing, upgrade a few things on it, and just ride it around the summer. So if you're wondering what the Black Cherry Pearl looks like, this is it. I actually uh, painted this bike with some of the paint I had for the Evo. Didn't use that much, so I figured, why not? All right, instead of just trying to pull off a panel, I wanna just pull the bike out. But you can really see the color shining in the sun. This is actually the color we're gonna be painting the Evo. It's called a uh, Black Cherry Pearl. Um, one thing I did with it, cause I felt like it leaned too close to purple when I got it. I actually had two um, containers about this big of a uh, red pearl flake that I went ahead and added in there. So now it kind of flops over more to red. And I love this color. Um, I know this color kind of looks like, you know, grandma, grandpa maroon, um, but I think it's gonna look great. So you can see it when the sun's not quite shining on it, it's really dark, but as soon as that sun hits it, you can see all that pearl just kind of coming through the coming through the paint. So um, yeah, I decided just to paint the bike this color just so that way I could get a good idea of what the Evo's color is gonna look like. And I'm, yeah, again, super stoked. I think this color is gonna look great. I think I made a good choice um, for the Evo because I'm kinda, kinda over that loud color phase. I don't know. Like, don't get me wrong, purple is pretty loud, but that's a dark purple. That's not like a, hey, like, look at me purple, right? Like the orange on the STI looks great, but that's a really loud color. It's a color that really attracts a lot of attention and kind of over that phase in life, right? The Evo's orange, as you're aware. So we're gonna go with a little bit of a darker color that has a lot more definition to it. So really stoked about this black, this uh, black cherry pearl. And yeah, I think it's gonna look great on the Evo, especially with the new route we're going. It's gonna be a little bit more battle stance, not so much stancy car with camber and the stretch tires and stuff. But let me know, do you guys wanna see me do a build series on this thing? Um, I don't really have too many plans for it. I actually wanna sell it. I wanna get it running and driving and cleaned up and ready for the next owner so that way they can enjoy it. It's a little bit too much bike for me. It's a little bit too big. Um, I'm only 5'6", and I only weigh about 190 pounds. And I don't know, that's you know pretty average, normal size guy, but it's a little heavy. Um, I can see it becoming uncomfortable. I want something, I want like an 883, like a Sportster. Um, I would enjoy that, but 
Yeah, we're gonna clean this up. This mess of wiring, I'm gonna uh, sheath with um, and clean up and tuck it in so it won't be, you won't see it. I'm actually gonna paint the frame because it's all, looks terrible. So I'm gonna sand down, paint the frame. We're gonna do new carbs, um, new intake boots. And I'm probably gonna do a different exhaust because this one is, well, yeah, they had to uh, do some custom stuff to make it work and it looks terrible. They basically took a hammer and dented it all in to make it work. So we're gonna remove that exhaust and probably do something something different. But heck, it came with a lot of cool stuff. Um, it's all rewired, it just, they did it terribly. It has this little control panel with USB ports, uh, a voltmeter, I think that's a battery kill switch. And well, I don't know what that is. And it also has a new fuse box, has these nice handlebars, I mean, grips that aren't hooked to anything. This is a throttle and uh, yeah, you can see it's not connected. It's got these little whatever mirrors that aren't really on and it's got a headlight. So I'm gonna replace um, the levers. Um, clean everything up, actually attach the, the throttle cable, tighten that, tighten down the seat, um, do a new exhaust and paint the frame. Um, I also have new covers because these are all scratched up. So I have new polished covers are gonna go on. But yeah, let me know if you wanna see more about this bike. If not, I'm just gonna build this on my downtime just kinda as a, you know, thing to relax and enjoy, but I, yeah, I, I don't know how many of you guys would really be interested in this, but aside from that, that's kind of what I have going on. That's kind of why I've been super busy. Uh, been focusing a lot on the gym, been focusing a lot on work and family time. So spending time with the cars have kind of taken a backseat to things, but we have a whole boatload of parts that we got to throw on and I'm gonna film whenever I go out to install those. Uh, I'm waiting for the side skirts to come in because I got to paint them and then we'll go ahead and record me installing them and then in the same video we'll probably do the um, the fender vents as well and if, it, if we have time we'll probably do the uh, rear diffuser as well I just that way we can see kind of like what the finished product is going to look like uh, we'll still be missing a rear windshield just because um, again I'm waiting on the the seal, the rear windshield seal to come in from Forbidden. And then the only thing I really have left on the car to do is I wanna make my own splitter. Um, I'm gonna try and make my own chassis mount splitter, one that you can like stand on and be actually functional. So still doing a little bit of research on that. Um, I'm also doing research on how to make my own carbon fiber canards. So I might be making my own carbon fiber canards just cause the, the Voltex style ones are like $500 with like an eight week long ship time and the authentic ones are well more money and longer wait so i'm gonna try and make my own so that way i don't have to wait and it's gonna be a lot less expensive so i'll definitely film those so that way you guys can see um from the research i've done it's really not that expensive it's gonna cost roughly about 180 dollars in materials but i think we can do it um aside from that other projects we have going on um i need to clean that guy up i ordered a new barrel because one of the wheels has a crack in it and it loses air and um when i go to do that i'm going to pull all the wheels apart and repolish them just because from sitting they've kind of started rotting away additionally i need to put a radiator in it uh, the radiator seal sprung a leak so i have that already we just need to go ahead and put it on but yeah we uh we are not low on projects here guys we have a lot going on and if you're finding any value in this then please follow along um i'm not the guy that is gonna just spend thousands of dollars and send it off to a shop to get done i want to show you guys that all this is doable if i can do it you can do it too um i've actually had a few friends that because of my videos and because of the stuff i've been doing have learned to paint their own cars as well and that's my entire goal right um i'm not a professional by any means but I'm also just a guy in his garage messing around, doing it all. And yeah, that's what I want you guys to be doing. You know, become self-sufficient, learn how to do these things yourself. You're gonna notice you're gonna spend a boatload less money and 
still have a badass cool looking car but other than that we're going to wrap up the video here this is kind of a long one i kind of went on a few rants here so i apologize for that if you've made it this far i appreciate you and yeah come along for for the next one we're going to get started on this evo build here in the next couple weeks and as these parts come in for the s1000 we'll go and get that one wrapped up and ready to go and let me know comment down below what you want to see more of um if there's any i you know ideal projects that you want to see if there if you prefer more of these talking style videos uh one video i've been thinking about doing just because i do a lot of you know facebook marketplace finding deals is teaching you guys how to find these deals how to negotiate and how to build a car with you know next to nothing right so if there's you know interest in that go ahead and comment below and let me know and uh, other than that we'll see you guys in the next video